All right, the next thing that we look at in this transformations unit is uh, what happens when you make a couple different types of changes here to whatever function you want here. f of x could be anything, right? Um, but the change we're talking about making is if we change x to negative x. And then later on, if we change y to negative y. We're going to make those two changes. So changing the x inside the function here to negative x, or changing the y over here outside of the function to negative y. Okay, we're going to start with uh, start with the change to the x. All right, so this is if you have some kind of a function. I am just going to use some some function that is hopefully somewhat familiar to you. It's going to involve absolute value, but um, I don't want to just use absolute value of x for this, and I'll show you why in a sec. I actually want to shift a little bit to begin with. So what I'm going to do is say, let's shift that a little bit, and then that's going to be our basic starting function, f of x. And then after that, we can just write some, uh, make some changes to that. All right, so I'll show you what I mean here. Uh, we're going to put our crazy function in here, f of x equals, oops, we want to say, we want to just, we want to define what f of x is here first. We want to put in, I said we want, we don't just want f, I, I don't want it in the center. For what we're doing, I don't want that vertex to be at the center. So let's, uh, it's going to be easier to see what's going on if we move it a little bit. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's make it a little bit lighter so we can compare it to other stuff here now. All right, so that's our that's our basic function. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take y equals f of x, and uh, and then so we'll even turn that one off so we don't see it. How about that? There's our f of x, and we're going to see what happens when we make changes to that. This is the one we should change the color of to make it lighter, and we're going to first of all then we're going to say here what happens if we put f of negative x. Okay, When you look at that picture, that looks to me like it's a mirror image across this line here, right? And that's exactly what it is. This is a horizontal reflection. We have a horizontal reflection in this function. All right, this, all the points that are on this side have now been reflected over to that side. And all the points on the original one on this side have been reflected over to the other side. What has changed here is uh, is the is a change in x. The x values have changed. This point that was 2, negative 3, right? This point that was 2, negative 3 here has now become this point, negative 2, negative 3. The x values have changed, right? 2, negative 3 has become negative uh, 2, negative 3. Y values are the same. They haven't changed. The X values have changed. We're going to look at why that happens, or a little more specifically, uh, what's going on when we look at a table here. So these are those two functions. We're just calling them F of X, and then we're doing F of negative X. So if we, if we pick some numbers here like negative 5, negative 4, and then I just continue this down here, um, continue that pattern. Hopefully Excel will figure out my pattern there. Now that might be hard to see, but let's just compare one pair of points at a time, like these points correspond to each other. Look at what changes happen here. The Y values are the same, but the X value has switched signs, right? The ones that used to be, the X values that used to be po negative are now positive. And then the X values that used to be positive are now negative. They've changed. Y values have stayed the same. If you think about why that is here, when you have your original function, that absolute value, you know, the the several operations we had there, subtract 2, take the absolute value, then minus 3. That's what F stands for here. But whatever, you know, whatever that ends up resulting in, say right there, when you throw a negative sign in there in addition to the mix, it makes a change where if you have a negative, uh, if it took a negative x value to get this value, 3. Negative 4 gives you 3. If you have a negative in here, what that says is before you apply this function, take the x value 
and put this negative in front, or in other words, change its sign. Putting a negative in front of a variable just changes the sign of whatever that value is. So when it was a negative, before you apply the function, it changes it to a positive. So essentially then, any, you know, any relationship between numbers here is going to be the same relationship except the x value is going to be the positive if it was negative and negative if it was positive. All right, change the sign of the x value before you apply that function. That's what's going on there, and that is what you see when you have a when you have a uh, horizontal reflection. All right. So if we're going to summarize that here, real quick, when we make a change, when we change x to negative x, I guess we could. Get that right off the page there. In any function, okay? If you, um, in, I guess we could put y equals to make it nice. y equals f of x. So if we change that, if we replace this x with negative x, okay, that's the change you're making. So when it turns into y equals f of negative x, that is a horizontal reflection. Horizontal ref reflection. Now we should say, you should identify where the, you know, where the mirror is. The mirror is the y-axis, which seems kind of weird because we're talking about a horizontal reflection. The points move horizontally, but the mirror is this vertical line here. To reflect something horizontally, you need the mirror or the line of that it's reflecting over to be vertical. All right, so horizontal reflection. I'm going to put. Um, a lot of times they say reflected in the y-axis. You might also say over the y-axis. But that's what happens. Okay, you make that change like that. All right. And when you uh, when you make that change, you end up where. Uh, we should say before I say all here, the x values of all points change sign, right? Anything that has a negative x value changes to have a positive x value. Anything that has a positive x value changes to have a negative x value. Now, when we start talking about horizontal reflections, we should talk about this point here, these points on the axis. The points that aren't on the axis get reflected one way or the other. But the point that's on the axis, this point here, it's on both curves. It doesn't change. Points that have positive x values become negative. Points that have negative x values become positive. Points that have zero x values don't change. All right. Points that don't change which we're going to write down below here. Whoa, that was fast. Um, okay, points with negative x values change to having positive x values. Those that have positive x values, negative. But uh, the ones with zero x values, they still have zero x values. They don't change. Those points are called invariant points. This point right here is called an invariant point because it doesn't change. And those points are going to be on the y-axis where x equals 0. In other words, on the y-axis. Okay, those are called invariant points. That's good to know when you're talking about different kinds of transformations, and in this case, horizontal reflections.